Friends from near and far, it brings me great pleasure to invite you to our fourth class on SBH Zoom Baking Party. And we have a master baker for you, the head of our ladies auxiliary, Terry Azos. And she's going to be doing one of her favorites, the classic bizcocho, which we all know and love and have with our tea and our coffee and with everything. And uh, this is together with the Sephardic uh, Brotherhood of, of America. And we're very happy to have you all with us. I'm going to be running the sound and asking questions, but Terry is going to be doing the demonstration. So Terry, take it away. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, you know, it's been a really difficult time for all of us, uh, but the wonderful thing is being able to get together and, and do these baking days because it brings us back to the time when we are able to get together and share stories and, and talk around the table. So uh, Rabbi, thank you for uh, instigating all this. And I want to also give a big shout out to Sharon uh, Adato for coordinating and implementing um, this opportunity for all of us. So right now, before we actually get started, it would be a good time for you to go turn your ovens on to 375 if you're actually gonna be baking uh, along uh, with me. So I'll give you a second, go turn your ovens on and uh, that way they'll be all preheated when we're ready to stick our pans in the oven. So uh, while you're doing that, I'll just give you a little bit of a, my background. Um, I got married very young, uh, just a little bit over 20 years old, and uh, being from an Ashkenazic family and, and marrying into a Sephardic family, everything was, was new. I didn't know how to cook in the first place, I didn't know how to bake, and you know, even though I have home economics, you know how much that gives you, it gives you the basics, but um, I didn't realize that Sephardic cooking really took um, a technique. And uh, so my very first uh, attempt at baking, because I wanted to please my husband, um, was to make biscochos for him. And of course I had no idea, so I, you know, have my little trusty cookbook. This is the old, uh, very first uh, Sephardic cooking from the Sephardic Victor Holm one. And of course it's all kind of ripped up now, but I use it still. And um, I didn't realize that you needed to add more flour if it was sticky. So I was trying to work with this really sticky dough and it just didn't work. And I was very frustrated and uh, thought I would never be able to make these. But you know, with practice like everything else, you know, you do learn. So. Um, but I gotta say, Dave was wonderful about it. And even though they looked awful and they were whatever, he ate them and he relished them because I did try. So, um, you know, I did a little research um, about biscochos. Uh, I just figured they were just a Sephardic thing, but they're not. They've been around for about thousands of years and each area has their own special name and um, their own special flavor. Um, you know, wine or cognac or raki or vanilla, orange, uh, you know, these are all flavors uh, and topped with, um, you know, sesame, cinnamon and sugar, or even some chopped walnuts, I found out. So, you know, in Izmir, um, they're called reshas and or reshikas, and which is an, actually an ancient Arabic uh, word meaning ropes or little ropes. And biscocho actually means baked twice. So around the world, they're called different things. Like um, in one place, it's called Rose, uh, hmm, Rosquita, uh, which means little rings. And in Portugal, they're Roscas. In Cuba, they're Biscochitos, Salonica, uh, Biscochos, or even Rashica. So uh, everybody has their name for them, and everybody has their own special recipe. The recipes are um, varied and everybody has their special recipe. So, you know, if mine is a little different than yours or if you've never made it before, it's a basic recipe and you can add to it or you can um, change it however you want. One thing I did see in looking at various recipes is that pretty much if you use six eggs, you're gonna use around six cups of flour. And the other thing that varies is how much baking powder you put in. Of course, if you put in a whole lot, you're gonna have puffier cookies. Um, but if you put in a little less, it'll be a little less. You know, and also how thick or thin you roll your dough. So with that note, let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna add my eggs to the mixer. And uh, I like to do them 
one at a time like this, and just because I get shells in and um, want to make sure that they are all in you know, good, good usable order. You never know sometimes what you're going to find in them. Sometimes two yolks, and sometimes you know which would make a difference in uh, how much flour you would uh, need to put into your into your dough. So I like to I like to mix up my eggs pretty good. You know, for a few minutes just to kind of get them all loosened up. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the oil and the sugar. The oil is a third, uh, my recipe is a third of a cup. And as far as the oil goes, you can use either um, canola oil or uh, vegetable oil. I'm using vegetable oil today, and I don't think that I would use any olive oil or any strong oils. I think that it would take away from the taste. Okay, so now I'm just going to add my oil, which is a third of a cup. And I'm going to put my sugar in, which is half of a cup. Now, there again, some people like it uh, sweeter, some people don't. So, totally up to you how much sugar you, you or your family likes. Okay, and then we're going to add vanilla. You know, vanilla has become a very expensive uh, condiment, so to speak, or flavoring. And so the recipe calls for half a cup. Now, normally I wouldn't measure it, but um, as I said, you know, with today's uh, cost of vanilla, yeah, you can do it. So, you know, I remember the first time that I made them, we didn't, I didn't put vanilla in it because my recipe called for, or somebody had told me that the real traditional way was to use orange juice. So that's exactly what I did. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn my mixer down a little bit and start adding flour. Now I've measured out uh, four cups. I'm not going to use four cups, but I just wanted to have it ready just in case. So I'll start with my first cup. And then the next thing that I like to do is to add my baking powder once I have um, once I have the uh, first part of the uh, flour in. And my recipe calls for a um, teaspoon and a half. So I'm gonna. It's not exact, but it's you know it's close enough. So that's a teaspoon and a teaspoon and a half. So we're good with that. So basically, that's all that goes into the uh, biscotto. Now, some people add a little bit of um, salt to it. My recipe doesn't call for it, um, but you could. I'm going to add my second cup of flour. What we're looking for is kind of a, a not a real stiff dough, but a stiff enough dough so that it's workable, and not uh, you don't want, it, but you don't want it to break apart and nothing that's too sticky. So it's kind of like a fine a line in between there. And then the other thing is um, that I read, and I've never tried it, but it says if your dough gets a little too stiff, it's okay to add a little more oil to it, and that will help to make it easier to, uh, to work with. Okay, so we should be getting there. I know it's hard to see my inside, but I'll show you a second. You want it to come together. Now I'll show you, this dough is way too soft and I'm going to show you. You can see it's just a, it's just way sticky. It'll never, that's the way I did it the first time, but you would never try to <laughs> make the scotches like that. So you add flour until you get it to, you know, consistency that you think you're going to roll. And if you're worried about getting too much or you're not getting enough flour or whatever, it's okay to put it on your board and kind of knead it in a little bit more if you want to. Let's see how this is coming. Still a little bit sticky. I think my eggs were a little bit bigger today. I'll crank this up a little bit. Okay.
see that it's a nice workable, workable dough. So I'm gonna put this out onto my little cutting board here. Hopefully you can all see what I'm doing as soon as I get it out. And my two, um, two of my granddaughters are sitting at the table and they're, they are following along completely. Although we made those this morning, so they're waiting for their opportunity to start shaping. Um, I wasn't real good about uh, sharing things with my kids. Um, I've always been kind of a perfectionist when it comes to cooking. I like everything to look uniform and everything to be uh, just so. And, and as a result, my girls don't bake. And I feel bad about that. Um, and so I'm not going to repeat that with my granddaughters. They're going to learn and they're going to continue on the traditions and they can show their mothers how to do things. Anyway, it's more fun. It's more fun working with your grandchildren because you're not as um, picky about how things look. And as my kids would always tell me, it's going to taste the same and we're going to eat them anyway. So it doesn't really matter how they look, but more about that in a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, wrap this in saran wrap just to just see it's like a nice, a nice pliable piece of dough. So I'm just going to wrap this in saran wrap for, for just a few minutes and we'll, we'll chat a little bit and then um, we'll get busy with our shaping. There's many different ways that you can shape it. So I've got it all together right here. I'm going to move my things away so that I don't knock into them. And um, I'm going to share with you just briefly. We're going to do three different, three different um, ways of making them. So we have the, the, the typical ones that we make in Seattle, which are little, have little cuts in them, and they're round, and they're crisp and they have you know sesame seed on them. Some families, you know, or some people are allergic to sesame seeds, so they like cinnamon and sugar. So some people make them this way. And in uh, in my looking around on the uh, internet about biscochos and whatever, some make them this way. It's kind of hard. It's kind of almost like <clears throat> this, but they're uh, instead of being long, they're put together. These I made a little thick uh, because I'd never done them this way before, so I made them with cinnamon and sugar, and then I made these with same same uh, twist with uh, sesame seeds. So we're gonna we're gonna do all three of them today, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get them successfully baked. So uh, what I'm gonna ask the rabbi to do now is to kind of put up some pictures. I sent him pictures from past. Um, bizarre cooking and I'll give you a little explanation while we're waiting for our dough to kind of sit for a minute. a couple of questions Terry. Okay. Uh, Roz asks how many eggs for four cups of flour? Four eggs. Yes there's one egg for one egg, egg. cup. Okay. Yeah I was gonna say it's usually like four eggs for four cups of flour, six eggs for six cups of flour. You know and as I say depending on the size of your eggs you know, you may um, need to put more flour in, or if they're smaller eggs, you're going to put a little less in. So that's why if it says six, you know, I would put in five and a half and start working up on uh, working up on, mm -hmm. on the number of uh, cups of flour. And Sarah wants to know who's the best baker in your, of your children? <laughs> that's my daughter, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest and say my daughter-in-law, Erin. <laughs> is the best baker. She listens. My daughter doesn't listen very well. <laughs> now, mind you, she's what, 43? 44. 44. <laughs> You're going to go on there. There you go. Oh, and a couple of you have joined late. How much sugar again do we add? Well, for my recipe, I'm using um, half a cup of sugar. But, you know, I've seen it all the way up to, you know, uh, three quarters of a cup. I'm only using three eggs. So you can double this very easily. Uh, actually, in this cookbook that I'm using, it is uh, six eggs. So I cut it in half just for, for time. Also, you know, this cookbook um, is the second uh, edition, more or less, of this. But it's, uh, the recipes have been a little bit more uh, refined. In the original cookbook, I think that they were trying to translate from, well, you use a glass of this, or you use a handful of this, you know, and they were trying to, whatever. This is a little bit more refined. 
Um, I don't think it's the very best cookbook, but it really is a good basic um, Sephardic cooking uh, uh, way of doing things. And this cookbook is available at the synagogue if um, anybody is interested. It has a different cover, but it's the same inside. Okay, any more questions before we... That's it. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this is going to work. Okay. Can everyone see that? Ah, so when we're, when we're doing uh, our bazaar, we usually do like maybe three days, four days of baking biscochos, and we do about 10,000. This is the Belemas. We're a little fast, but this is the Belema technique, and uh, I, I'm very sad to say that our, our very special Al Cordova, who was our expert spinach cutter chopper for years and years and years, he was fabulous at it. Uh, passed away just a few weeks ago, and I'm very sad because if we do Bizarre again, we will truly, truly miss him. But um, doing the Belemas the way that we do them, um, it's a lot of work, and uh, thank goodness we have people that, you know, are passionate about it, but we stretch our own feel and go all the way out to, you know, a six-foot table, and... Um, here's, a, here's a picture of Al right here. Yeah, and um, so... This is, and, and that looks like, I can't see. That's Judy Amiel, I know Judy Amiel, um, yeah. who passed away not too long ago either. Very sad. And here we are, we, I, actually now putting the spinach into the cut fila. We were interviewed, the woman, oops, the woman in the, bell, in the middle was Rachel Bell. She actually um, is, I believe, on Cairo Radio, and she came and did a feature article with us and came and baked with us a few times. She is actually Jewish. Uh, I don't know what her real name is, but she goes by Rachel Bell. And, uh, you know, she had a great time. She actually called me and said, when are we doing this again? I said, hopefully soon. Marzipan. Marzipan. And actually, Beverly um, DeGene uh, was the one that was uh, the chair of doing our Massapan for us. And uh, unfortunately, she passed away recently, too. And these are our pastelis. Um, these are made in triangular, and these are the cups. They're beautiful. They're just absolutely exquisite. And here, Rabbi is learning how to do it. And if he can do it, anybody can do it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just whipping them out and there's our very special packer Bruce Condiotti oh, uh, I have always count on him to come and help whenever we need uh, packing of 10,000 biscochos or anything else he's great as is all these unbelievable hard working women who come in day and in and day out I mean we work for several months to get everything made and prepared. And Lily. Yeah. And Al. And that's the dough for the bulemas. Yeah. We're gonna actually have some bulema baking later on in a couple of months, we've got it scheduled. So we're gonna have that, so. We'll see how that goes. And here are the bulemas cooked. Mm -hmm. Your prax. Your prax. Everybody kind of has their own specialty. Some show up for everything and some say, I'm only going to do you know, this or that or whatever. And it's, it's great because we get the best of the best. Okay. I think that's the end of the pictures. OK, good. Well, that timing is absolutely perfect because now we've, um, our dough has rested. And we're going to, I'm going to unwrap my dough. By the way, Terry, you should know there's 77 people watching this right now. Oh my goodness. Well, welcome everybody. <laughs> From my house to yours. Okay. So we have our dough. And what I'm going to do is I, I like to cut it into four pieces. Maybe more if I was doing more eggs. And the reason I do that is because you don't want your dough to dry out. So then I put it back into the uh, plastic and wrap it back up so that it stays moist. And if it gets crumbly, it's not so much fun to work with. 
Okay, and then um, just kind of roll it into a log. You know, start with that. Some people will keep it in a ball and they'll just roll out a little bit and work a little bit at a time, but I think that that takes practice. So what I'm gonna show you is um, I would take my little log here and I would cut it into fourths and work with one little piece at a time. So first we're gonna do the round ones. And what I like to do is, I always say it has to be kind of a, a steady hand because you, want, you don't want it to be lumpy in one section and you know, thick in one section and thin in another section. You wanna to try to get it as even as possible. And I like to say about a quarter of an inch. So I'll show you about where we get. Now I made this a little bit long, but I also took a, um, just a little skewer and cut it six inches long. And I just like to use this as a little measuring tool just so that I keep everything, as I was telling you, uniform and uh, <laughs> easy to work with. So now I'm just gonna cut it six inches. And so we've got our, I don't know if you can see how, whoops, how thin that is, but that's about what I like to do it. Now, some people like them thicker, some like them thinner. It's totally up to you how you, uh, how you want to present them. So the next thing is um, you're going to cut them. And I usually like to use my finger to, uh, you know, to measure. So, and I also like to cut at an angle. I think it looks prettier. And so I just kind of do, you know, eight, nine, 10 cuts, whatever you get out of the, that, you know, that piece. If you can see how I'm doing that. I'll hold it up so maybe you can see better. I don't know. And then just um, make it into a circle. And then I will move my cookie sheet over here. And whoops, make a little room. And whoops, put them down here. Make it nice and round. Now they're going to puff. So I'm going to put them here and we're going to and, and continue. So we'll continue on with this. And I'll measure out, you know, about six inches again and then do my cuts. Now some people like more cuts, some people like less. You know, I'm not watching this, Terry. I, I can see in the corner of my eye there's a screen of uh, my Hassan ladies. I can see my wife and Kochava and Gabby and Ruti and Tova, they're all uh, doing this right now, live. So hopefully That's there's, wonderful. Gonna be, there's gonna be biscochos when I get home. I love it. Absolutely. And they'll be delicious, I promise you. Anybody have a question? The question from uh, is how how many does this make the three eggs? How how many biscochos roughly we're going to be making here? Well, I get about uh, let's see, uh, maybe thirty. Depends on the size. Um, you know, as you get better at making them, it goes real fast. Um, so, but. You know, if you just want a little snack or something, three eggs goes through real quickly. But if you want to spend a little more time on it, like for the holidays and whatever, then, um, you know, six eggs, four eggs, whatever. You can do whatever you want. Larry, can you talk a little bit about the type of things that you make for, the, for Rosh Hashanah at home? Well, for Rosh Hashanah, uh, we always make bulemas and we, all, we always make pumpkin fila. We always make prasa. We always make uh, pishkada con limon. Um, what else do we make? Uh, round challah. Um, challah is one thing that I, I really like making. And, and, and uh, while we've been kind of down with, uh, in the house with COVID, uh, you know, going on around us, we have, or I have done a lot of different bread baking. I did, um, I've done um, uh, rustic bread and onion bread and, uh, you know, challahs, different kinds of challah. And, um, you know, I, I used to only 
we used to only go through one challah on on Shabbat, but now with the family getting the kids getting so much bigger, we end up going through almost two because the kids love it. <laughs> and uh, just a, a plug: next week uh, we're going to have Jeannie Maiman, and she's going to be doing the first of two classes on the Ihiratzones, that's the special foods that we eat on Rosh Hashanah, and she'll be talking to us a little bit more about that and all the foods that we make. Uh, Angela wants to know, how long do the biscochos cook for? Um, how long do they last, sorry? So if you're gonna be, t can you talk a little bit about the toasting and how long you can uh, let these uh, biscochos last for? Well, according to some, they put them in a, like an old coffee can, you know, the this, are, this is from some of the ladies, and you, you know, that's tight, airtight, and they can last in your cupboard for months. Um, I like to put them in the freezer if I'm not going to use them right away, and uh, just, just because. But, you know, they could be, they can last a long time. You know, they're easily uh, baked and, uh, and dried. It's nothing that's moist really in there, so... Uh, they can last for a long time. Elisa Azos asked a, a joking question. At what point would you add the raki and how much? Well, I, I, you would add, I, there is a recipe. I was just looking oh, it up. Okay. And it's uh, raki biscochos. And the, the recipe that's in the cookbook is uh, one and a third cups of raki, half a cup of oil, a cup of sugar, four heaping teaspoons of baking powder, and one large egg egg white and flour. And so for, okay, and for those who don't know, Raki is Arak. Uh, so we have a lot of people on here who, uh, Terry, weren't familiar with all those Rosh Hashanah things you listed. So can you just slowly go through some of those things? What is prasa? And... Okay, prasa is leeks. Uh, they're made from leeks and it's a, quite a, a process of washing the leeks and then you uh, have to boil them and then you have to wring them out and then you add to it um, uh, some flour matzo meal and um, eggs and you fry them and they're delicious and so uh, I actually have some in the freezer I could pull some out and show you what they look like but um, they're very good and they're delicious and the kids everybody loves them and I don't ever make enough uh, because it's you know it's, you could do five pounds of uh, of uh, uh, leeks and uh, it goes down to not not a whole lot once it's boiled. So, um, but that's part of it. And then we, uh, the bolemas are made with the fila dough. Uh, these are the hand stretched fila dough, the handmade dough, not the, I don't use the boxed fila dough. And uh, it's filled with spinach and, you know, fresh spinach and uh, Parmesan cheese and feta cheese. And wrap it all up and you bake them and delicious, delicious. And um, barrecas, of course, are, it could be filled with uh, almost anything. And that's almost like a pie crust dough that are shaped in like half moons. And we fill them with potato and feta cheese and, Parmesan cheese and some people put cottage cheese in, some put cream cheese in, you know, whatever. But it's a, a nice fluffy uh, potato um, filled uh, pastry. So, okay, so the next one I'm going to show you now is um, the twisted one, this one here. It's just very easy. Now, you know, um, my kids grew up uh, using things as teething rings. I make sure they were really hard, and um, they would, um, when they were getting their teeth, I used to give them to them. You know why not? It's delicious. So you've got your rope, and and this one you want to make a little, you want to make them longer because they're twisted and whatever. So you, I just I just twist them like this. Make it simple. You can make them as long or as short as you want. And then just put them down on your, this one's a little long. Somebody's going to get a bonus there. And, okay. That's, that's a, a good way to do it too. And as I said, they're good for, uh, you know, um, although, you know, moms today don't uh, give their kids, you know, cookies at uh, six months old, I don't think anymore. Although, 
you know, when they were getting their teeth, it was three months, six months. Of course, we were feeding them cereal and everything else at probably a month old when, when my kids were born. So anyway, so let me show you one more of those twisted ones. Obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole, all the dough. And uh, my, my little granddaughters are doing a beautiful job. And they're going to, um, we're going to get theirs in the oven just about the same time as mine. And I think they're, they're showing me up. So here we go. So there's another twisted one. See, just simple. And then the last one I'm going to show you is this yeah. fancy little number here. And I, uh, you have to make it long and you have to make it even skinnier. Otherwise, they, they really get um, puffy. There's no cuts in them or anything. Okay. So basically, it's the same thing. You just twist them. And then I'm going to um, cut, the, cut them a little bit so I, on both ends, just so that when I put them together, they're going to kind of go together so you don't really see the connection. See? You see that against my dress, maybe. Okay. And then we'll put that there. Okay. Any questions on shaping them? All right, the next step is we're going to brush them with an egg wash. Now, I may have gotten some of these a little thinner than I normally would, but they'll bake fast. And the uh, secret is if you have them all pretty much the same thickness, uh, they'll all cook equally the same. But after we get them uh, baked, then uh, you let them cool and you put them back in the oven um, at 200 uh, to kind of toast. Some people do, some people don't. That was the the way that I finally did learn. So what I'm gonna show you is I brushed those with a pastry brush, but when I put sesame on, and everybody there again does it their own way, I take a little paper towel, dip it in my egg, and then dip it in my sesame seed, and see I got a whole bunch of sesame on there. So when I put it on my cookie, my biscotto, it sticks, because I've already put it on the, uh, put egg wash on there, and it sticks to my paper towel and it sticks nicely so you get a, a good amount of sesame on there and you don't have a whole lot of waste. There we go. Okay, so this is what my my tray looks like before I put it in the oops before I put it in the oven. And I'm gonna set it in the oven. 375 for um you know 15, 20 minutes. Now, you know, um I just got these new ovens, so I'm not sure it's kind of hard for me to um figure them all out yet. Things have changed since my last one, but uh, it seems like every time before a holiday, uh, something goes out in the, in, the, in the house. You know, either the ovens, this last, uh, during Passover, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do any cooking because things weren't working. And, or your sink gets uh, clogged up because you've been shoving too much down the disposal. Uh, my husband was ready to uh, send me out the door. <laughs> He's tired of cleaning the, the drain. But uh, anyway, so I now have these new ovens and they're a lot different than my old ones and they cook differently. So, you know, you have to kind of use your judgment on the time. They're supposed to be golden brown 
and but not too dark because you're going to toast them and so they're nice and crisp so in Terry, the, Terry a few questions do you yes. add water to your egg for the wash no I don't okay I thought so just confirming yeah. uh, a comment here my mom used to add a little cinnamon to egg wash then black and white sesame seeds for topping Oh, you know what? I forgot to, uh, I was going to do some of them with, um, with cinnamon and sugar. I forgot to do that, but I do have cinnamon and sugar here too um, that I was going to put on, on the toppings. But because we have magic TV here. You can add it. Surprise. They're all done. Look at that. Ooh, wow. So we're all done and uh, they're ready for somebody to taste. Okay, uh, just Sharon's just confirming. You said let them cool in the oven. Did you mean cool no, out of the oven? The thing is, is that if your oven is, if you don't cool your oven down a little bit, uh, and you stick them in, they're going to get too dark. So I like to cool the cook, the cool the biscochos down. That gives the oven time to cool down too. Hopefully, although mine seem to stay hot for a long time, and then you can put them back in when your oven is either cool and you set it at 200 degrees and you toast them for almost for about an hour or if you um, have let your oven cool just put them in the oven and shut the door and you know if you do them in the evening and take them out in the morning or you can leave them in for a couple hours either way you know it's just a matter of toasting them until they're made till they're crisp because I think a biscotto needs to be crisp and not um, kind of uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Not uh, uh, chewy on the inside. Was that your granddaughter uh, stealing a biscotto there? Yeah, you want to come over here and say hello? <laughs> this is Ava Grace. Hi. Hi. How'd they yeah. taste? Good. <laughs> They're good. Okay. So, um, any other questions? That's it so far. Talk, talk about the toasting. Okay, well, so the toasting is uh, to make sure that they're nice and crisp. Me, so I don't know if you can hear it, but they are completely dry on the inside. They're great for dunking in your coffee um, or eating plain. And to say that when you make them in this way, they're um, you know they're a little a little uh, thicker and a little bit uh, um, I don't know harder for a baby to break off a big piece. They have to suck it really hard. <laughs> So, so the toasting it just makes it nice and crisp. Oh, nice stuff. So this is what my, my granddaughters did. I think they did a beautiful job. And we're going to put them in. Very nice. Yeah. So, and uh, if you have any more questions, I'm, uh, or if you want me to tell you anything else, I'm more than happy to. Uh, we hope to be doing a bazaar again, uh, maybe next year. It would be nice to uh, have some uh, time to spend together sharing our stories and, and kind of bonding as it feels like we've been you know isolated, although doing the baking this way has been really nice. Although I wish I could see everybody's face and see what you're doing. Anything, Rabbi? Um, uh, just a couple of little questions about... Uh, how do you store them? I said a Ziploc bag or a cookie jar is fine, right? Yes. Airtight. Something is airtight. And how long do you put them in the oven for? Uh, for 15, 20 minutes. They need to be lightly browned, not, you know, not too dark. And then when you toast them, you know, if your oven is too hot, they're going to turn too brown. Um, we've had a few little problems sometimes at the synagogue where we put them in too fast into the, um, the oven. They haven't cooled enough and we've, you know, had you know big trays of wasted well i would never say wasted because even when they're really brown they're still okay to eat you know, well like it says in our house we don't worry about them lasting too long no they don't <laughs> <laughs> but i always i always say they're one of the bees you know one of the, the to me the, the bees uh for safari cooking are you know barecas biscochos and balamas so they all go in hand in hand for holidays yeah, and we're going to hopefully we're going to have bulemas and barakas coming up in some of our future classes. But as I said, next week, uh, Jeannie Maiman is going to be doing her first of two classes on Rosh Hashanah foods, what we call the Yehi Ratzones. 
And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. And a special big thank you to Terry for all that she's done today, our master uh, baker, and for Sharon Adato for helping me in coordinating all of this and promoting it with everyone. So thank you all. And uh, we'll see you all uh, next week. Congrats. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone.